Senator from Eastern Fairfax County, Senator Surville. Thank you, Mr. President. Speaking to the bill. Senator has the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, the Senate, I agree this is a sad day. The winner having to talk about this and deal with this issue. Uh, it's also a sad day. This is the second time I've had to give this speech and speak to this bill. It's not the first time this legislature has seen it. We saw it three years ago. It was two or three years ago. And um, I think the Senate did the right thing that year by uh, killing it in committee. Unfortunately, that's not the situation this year. And this is not an anti-death penalty speech. I'm not going to tell you today why we should get rid of the death penalty. That's not what we're talking about. Today we're talking about what's the right way to do it. And that's what I'm going to focus my comments on. And I'll honestly argue at the end of this that if you favor the death penalty, if you actually want to see it imposed, the right thing to do is vote red. Because by passing this law, this thing's heading right to the courts. And I don't think it's going to survive. And I'll explain that in a second. I'll make five points. Number one, this bill isn't necessary. Number two, it's poorly written. Three, it jeopardizes the death penalty. Four, there's no transparency. And the last thing is I think this takes a massive step backwards for our state by going in this direction. First of all, why isn't it necessary? There's some concern about whether or not we have the drugs. I keep hearing that. Right now, today, Virginia still has two vials of the drugs. They bought three from Texas after we told them, or after we voted down, after we voted down legislation last year, making the whole process secret. They went and bought three vials from Texas, which has a secret process. But we still have two vials left. They used one vial to execute Ariel Prieto last year, and they got two vials left. And I guess it's the department's position now that because their protocol requires them to have three in their hand, because their current protocol that they won't let anybody see, by the way, requires them to have three in their hand that they can't go forward. The reality is it took one to execute Prieto. They can change their protocol if they feel like it. They don't have to show it to us. They still got the drugs to do it. There is no burning need to do this right now, today. They have enough drugs to conduct two more executions. That is, if they're being honest, which I still question. Number one. Number two, is this drug also, are these drugs impossible to get? If they are so hard to get, if it's so difficult to find these drugs, why have seven executions taken place in the United States this year by lethal injection? If somebody can answer that for me, that it's impossible to find these drugs, then how are all these other states able to do it? Again, this isn't necessary. We've also been told that there's a crisis here and there's an emergency. I agree. What Ricky Gray did was awful, horrible, horrific, barbaric. There's no question about that. But I question whether this is about Ricky Gray or not when there's not even an emergency clause on this bill. Right? I mean, if, if Ricky Gray is currently scheduled to be executed on March 16th, if this bill is about Ricky Gray, then where is the emergency clause? I would submit that that's not what it's about. So, Mr. Mr. Uh, President, number two, this bill is horribly written. And we talked about that a second ago when we were focusing on those amendments. It says the Department of Corrections says they can't find the drugs for any reason. There's absolutely no restrictions on that. Any reason is all it says. Incredibly vague, horrible, open-ended. I cannot believe we have language that's so vague when we're talking about executing a human life. What is a good reason? What is the Department of Corrections? Can anybody here tell me what a reason is? Because we just, we're about to give the Department of Corrections the authority to, to go to the electric chair for any reason. Is this a good reason? I didn't order the drugs. I didn't feel like ordering the drugs. I didn't want to order the drugs. I forgot to order the drugs. I ran out of needles. I can't find somebody who'll put a needle in him. Or I've changed the secret protocol to now require five vials instead of three. What, what is the reason? We just basically gave the Department of Corrections the authority to pick any reason they want, any reason in the world to not get the drugs, and now they can go to the electric chair. We are abdicating our responsibility to enact laws in this body but, and basically giving the Department of Corrections the authority to do whatever they want, however they want, for whatever reason they want, no matter who happens to be in the governor's mansion or anywhere else. I think we're abdicating our legislative responsibilities by if we pass this law in this current form. I would also say that this legislation is probably a de facto electric chair bill. Because, well, we did change it a little bit. Now it says the department has to exercise substantial efforts to go find those drugs. But that's, gonna have, that's an issue that's going to have to be litigated by the courts. Number three, why does this jeopardize the death penalty? Let me tell you why. Every court that has looked at the electric chair in the last 20 years, 
I shouldn't say every, two out of three courts. Last time I spoke on this, I got politifacted, so I gotta be accurate. And they found me mostly true. But two out of three courts that have looked at the electric chair in the last 20 years have held that the electric chair, not, not death penalty, the electric chair is unconstitutional and violates the Eighth Amendment of the United States Constitution. The only one that found it was okay was Florida, and they found it was okay because there was lethal injection out there on a four to three decision. But in 2001, the Supreme Court of Georgia, Georgia of all places, found that the electric chair constituted cruel and unusual punishment. In 2008, the Supreme Court of Nebraska, the very last state in the union that had an electric chair only method, on a six to one decision, Nebraska found it constituted cruel and unusual punishment. I'll just give you that backdrop. What about Virginia? The Supreme Court of Virginia, they last looked at this in 1921. 1921, Commonwealth versus Hart. Now, the last time the Supreme Court was asked to look at it, requested to look at it, 2013, Commonwealth, Lawler versus Commonwealth. And they dealt with it in a very summary, short, and quick fashion. Supreme Court said, when a prisoner sentenced to death may choose, choose to have his sentence executed through a constitutionally permissible method, we will not consider a constitutional challenge to an alternative choice. So when the prisoner has a choice, the Supreme Court of Virginia won't look at it. You take away the choice, you change everything. And that is what we're doing with this bill. You take away the choice, you say, you don't get to pick lethal injection anymore because we can't, any, for any reason, find the drugs or whatever. Now we're going to put you in an electric chair. You have just completely changed the legal landscape of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And now the Supreme Court of Virginia is going to have to look at the electric chair. They're going to have to decide whether or not under contemporary standards it violates the Eighth Amendment of the United States Constitution. It violates the Virginia Constitution of Virginia. And every court that's looked at it on those terms in the last 20 years has said it constitutes torture. So you want to talk about a bill that has a fiscal impact? The Attorney General's office is going to need 10 more lawyers to deal with this. The Indigent Defense Office is going to need some more money for all the lawyers they're going to hire to litigate this, because this is getting litigated if we pass this. Number four, transparency. Fourth reason we should get rid of this, or vote this down, transparency. I'm a big advocate for transparency. I think the government should do everything it can with maximum transparency. It should extinguish a human life with as much transparency as possible. This bill is a mystery to me. Two years ago, it was an administration bill. This year, I'm told the administration doesn't have a position on it, even though it's pretty much the same bill. I've heard the administration's been actually out there having meetings about it and lobbying people about it, but it's not their bill. The general lady from Petersburg had a bill on a death penalty moratorium, this bill. Right, first, before we go to that, when this bill moved through the process, it's my understanding that not a single administration official has appeared in a committee hearing to talk about this legislation, to answer a single question about it. We're talking about changing the death penalty, and no legislator, as far as I know, has been able to ask a question of the Department of Corrections about the legislation before it's enacted. When is the last time you ever heard about that, that they don't have a position on something like this? The general lady from Petersburg put in a death penalty moratorium bill. We heard it in rehab. Not a single person in the administration showed up about a death penalty moratorium to answer questions. Mr. President, point of order. The senator from James City County, Senator Norman. Mr. President, I think it would be appropriate if the loquacious senator would focus his comments on 815 and not bills that may have been introduced years ago or bills that the lady from Petersburg introduced. Thank you, Senator. Please proceed. The administration, the Department of Corrections, I should say, is not answering questions about this legislation. And I want to remind you what happened last time we debated the death penalty. They showed up. They said, we don't have the drugs. We need to have secrecy. A month later, the Richmond Times-Dispatch runs an article that says, you know what? We looked at FOIA. We do have the drugs. We need transparency in this process. The bill doesn't have it. There's a history here, which is why we need to have transparency. Without the transparency, this doesn't work. I would just note, the Commonwealth of Virginia, I think, gives more transparency to the purchase of furniture than we do to the, governor's, the government's transparency given to the taking of human life. 
And to me, that's wrong as a matter of policy. Fifth thing I'll say, Mr. Mr. President, is that the electric chair is outdated and it's barbaric. It was first adopted in 1888 in the state of New York because hanging was seen as barbaric. The, actually, the initial death penalty litigation was actually done between, it was funded by Thomas Edison and George Westinghouse because they were both trying to prove each other's form of electricity was more dangerous. And they, they were fighting about who should be used. Virginia first adopted it in 1908. Now, this was adopted the same decade we discovered movies, this thing called the automobile when Coca-Cola was invented. This is the technology that we're saying should be the preferred method of execution in this state, something that was invented over 100 years ago. The electric chair has never been validated. You can't exactly go out and sort of test it. You can't sort of figure out what's the best way to, 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 to kill a human being with electricity. It doesn't really work that way because it's not legal. They've had a lot of trial and error. They've used different kinds of sponges. They've tried to figure out whether it's proper to plug it into your toe or your calf or your knee or you put them in your ears. Nobody knows the right way to do it. And so it's basically been this trial and error process over the last 100 years with bodies catching on fire and people sort of getting half electrocuted and, and, and surviving or baking or whatever as part of this process. It is a process that has never been figured out completely. That's why there's been repeated instances of major mistakes during executions that we're about to say is that it should be the method we use. What did the Georgia Supreme Court said when they were asked to look at it in 2001? We hold that death by electrocution with its specter of excruciating pain and its certainty of cooked brains and blistered bodies violates the prohibition against cruel and unusual punishment. And if you need validation for that, go ask the gentleman from Norfolk. He can tell you all about it because he's seen it. Now, I, I understand the things that Ricky Gray did and, and other people that have gotten the death penalty have done. They're horrible. They're barbaric. They, should, they deserve punishment. No question about that. They deserve maximum punishment that the state can inflict. When the Supreme Court of Nebraska heard facts like that. What they said is, we recognize the temptation to make the prisoner suffer just as a prisoner made the innocent victim suffer. But... It is the hallmark of a civilized society that we punish cruelty without practicing it. Condemned prisoners must not be tortured to death regardless of their crimes. We are more civilized today than we were in 1921. We shouldn't be doing this. 80% of the states, 80% of the states that had the electric chair at one point have now repealed it. 80%. PolitiFact checked me on that. 26 states had electrocution at one point. The only ones that still allow it today are Tennessee, Alabama, South Carolina, Florida, and Kentucky, if you were convicted before 1998. We are increasingly isolated, Mr. President. And what I would say is that this body, unlike the body on the other side of the aisle, we are more grown up. We are more reasoned. You heard the gentleman from Lynchburg talk about it a minute ago. We are the more reasoned body. I think we're more deliberate. I think we make better decisions over here. Every person knows here that if you push the green button, you're going to be sending us into a hailstorm of legal chaos, uncertainty, litigation. You're going to send us on a collision court with the Supreme Court of the United States. That's where this is headed if you, vote, if you push the green button. That's where it goes. But when somebody's given the death penalty in this state, the state is simply charged with extinguishing a human life, not torturing somebody brutally until they finally die. I would urge you to vote red on this bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator.